Yeah, well, thank you for the applause when we not even started yet, so maybe just save it till the end and see if it's worth it. Um, so I'm going to tell something about uh, the woe and what does the government do together with Mendel and Maya. And uh, when people just came in, they asked me, like, would what is it? What are you going to talk about? So I'm happy there are even some people here without knowing what are we going to talk about. We're going to talk about what is the bow, why do we have it, how do you use it, and we also have two case studies, uh, and Mendel will tell you more about it, about DigiD in the Belastingdienst. So we will talk about the WO, and it's not W-O-W, but W-O-O. And what is that? I have the honor to tell you about the legal part of the WO, which I think is the most interesting part as a lawyer, but I understand that it's probably not for the most of you, but I'll try to make it as interesting as possible, and otherwise you can just hope for the nice ending we will have. So to start off, what is the WOW? It's called the Wet Open Overheid, or in English, the Open Government Act, and it basically regulates the disclosure of information by your government. And this dis disclosure has to be not only passively, so upon request by, for example, us as a citizen, but also actively by the government themselves. So we want to know what they are doing. So you tell me what you're doing. And before I take you down a trip to memory lane, I will first tell you what it focuses on to give you a better, better view on what it is. So the WOW, for example, as, uh, applies to the government organizations. So think about governing bodies such as ministries, provinces, the Council of State, the Raad van State, or the Council of Judiciary, the Raad van Rechtspraak, the uh, regional water authorities, the Senate and the House of Representatives, so onze Eerste and Tweede Kamer. But also, even though the law doesn't apply to it, and the law doesn't state it applies for non-governmental organizations, it's super important to keep in mind that if you're a non-governmental organization, in some way the WO can apply for you as well. And I will tell you more about that later. And the WO focuses on information. Like I said, it's for the uh, disclosure of information. But then you have to ask yourself, what is information? So the law has a definition, and the definition is documents. And it's a pretty broad definition, so that it's, for example, a written document, and we don't mean handwritten or only a Word document, but a document that has data recorded in it. And it also said, uh, says other sets of recorded data. So think about WhatsApp messages, voice messages, Excel sheets, but also software. And we will tell you about more about that later. The part where it gets interesting for non-governmental organizations is that the, the definition of document says that it has to be recorded data or written documents made by the government or received by the government. So if you work for the government as a non-governmental organization and you send them information, for example, you write down advices or you develop software, that information is received by the, uh, by the government and can be a part of the law as well. Uh, one last important thing is that it ha the documents or the information have to relate to the public task of that specific government. So if you're super interested, uh, for example, in a civil servant working at a specific government and you want to know what they like to do in their weekends, you can't ask the, the, the government to uh, disclose that because it doesn't relate to the public task. So the basic theme is everything the government does is public unless. And that unless focuses on some documents um, maybe have confidential data in it, maybe are related to a criminal investigation, so they have some grounds to say we're not going to disclose it, for example, for the safety of our country, or maybe it has some financial data, it can't be disclosed. So they do have some grounds to say no. So to take you back in history, uh, like I said, uh, it, the, the basic rule is that Information has to be disclosed, and we need that uh, to have a good working uh, democracy. So um, it's our basis for everything. We need to know what the government does to have a working democracy. And we even have it laid down in the Constitution. And for the people that are interested in the law, just like me, you can find in Article 110, and it says, the government, in carrying out its duty, shall endeavor the, the public, uh, according to the rules, to be established by law. And this part, the established by law, <laughs> is for us the Wet Open Overheid, or the Open Government Act, so the law we're talking about today. We had another one back in 1980 until 2022, and maybe you remember that term, uh, it was just introduced. It was called the uh, Wet Openbaarheid Bestuur, 
and the abbreviation was WOP. So we would call it a WOP verzoek or WOP request. And now we have the wet open overheid since May last year. So it's pretty new and we call it the WO. So the WOP request now is a WO request. So what's the difference? Um, because we have it uh, since last year, and for me, um, well, like I said, of course I'm interested in law, and a, a year for a law is pretty new. And you can see that the focus changed a bit from the WOP to the WO. Because uh, under the WOP, we had the WOP request. I'm going to say WOP and WO <laughs> very often right now. We had a WOP request, and we would ask the government to disclose information. But what we see with the woe is that we focus more on the active disclosure. We want the government to disclose the information themselves up front. So not only when we ask for it, they have to disclose it up front. And to do so, uh, the government made a platform, and it's called uh, the open.overheid.nl, and it's um, made because instead of having uh, us as a citizen search on every governmental website for the information they uh, will disclose, they want uh, the government to disclose all the information in one certain place so it's easy for us to search for the documents so if you want to know something is public already you can go to that website and search for it in that platform another thing they focused on is that they uh, want every government organization to have a contact person for all the well requests to make sure that that uh, goes well and also we see the proposals opinions or advice from uh, officers of civil servants are made public more often. And that's not uh, obliged by the law. It's not a part of the law, but you see that it happens more often, so we are more transparent on how decisions are being made. And another one, which I think is important, is that if you have a WOE request, under the WOP, you ha they could expand their reaction with four weeks, and that's not only two weeks. So they can take less time, but to be realistic to you, <laughs> very often they take more time than a few weeks. Um, one difference I want to point out is that very often you hear that uh, a WOE request, they say, oh, well, you also have the right of access under the GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation, uh, for those that are not very familiar with it. It's very different because a WOE request is uh, focused on uh, government information and not on personal data. And while the right of access is per uh, focused on personal data and not on other information, and it's always about an individual. And to give you some background info, if you want to uh, make use of a right of access, you can only ask about your own personal data. So I can't uh, ask for uh, Mendel's or Maya's personal data that's being processed. I'm the only one that can use the right of access. While row request doesn't matter who does it because you want uh, to know the governmental data. And another important difference is that a row request will always be published or should always be published also at the, in the same platform we just saw while the right of access is only for you and it will never be published because then they would publish your personal data. So how does it work? And you will hear m way more about it when uh, Mendel and Maya uh, tell you. Basically, everyone can do it. So if you feel the need for more information and you can't find it at, at the platform I just showed you, you have to decide on what you want and on what subject you want it. And then you just send an email write a letter, use a card, maybe men will <laughs> tell you more about it as well, <laughs> and you tell them you want to make a WOE request and what kind of data you want. And you have to, I say, be as precise as possible because that's what they want. Even if you're very precise, they tend to ask you anyway, can you be more precise because we don't know what we have to deliver uh, for you. That's a basic thing, they try to buy some more time, but be precise as you can be, so stay what subject, maybe you read about a research they made, maybe you read something on the website you want to know, you can be precise as possible. Then, you, then the waiting game starts. They have four weeks to uh, give you the needed documents, or they can expand it with two weeks, but like I said, uh, to be realistic, for example, I'm now waiting for, uh, for uh, um, a response, and they uh, to just told me they're going to expand it with half a year. So. It can go anyway. Um, when you're lucky and the, t the waiting game ends, you will uh, receive the delivered documents and uh, they will always be anonymized because personal data won't be a part of the uh, information that will be disclosed. And to be honest, that can take some time too as well because if you ask for a lot of information and documents, they have to black out all the personal data and well, we know that sometimes it doesn't go as it should, so that takes some time as well. 
If they do not respond, or they just tell you they're not going to answer, you can send them a notice of default, and we call it an ingebrekenstelling. You don't need a lawyer for that. You can just do it yourself and uh, tell them, your, this is send, uh, sending me a notice of default to you because you didn't respond. I want to respond in two weeks. And if nothing helps, you can go to court. Um, all of it is free about a well request, except the part of going to court, uh, because you have to pay Giffy Recht. Um, but the rest of the part is all free. You get the Giffy Recht back. If you win. <laughs> if you win, you get the Giffy Recht back, but you need the money in the first place. Um, then I'm going to hand over to Maya, because now the legal part has ended. We all know the legal background, and now we're going to talk about the fun stuff. <laughs> well, that was your fun, at least, right? <laughs> well, at least I have fun, yeah. <laughs> no, thanks a lot. Um, now, we know what woe is, but why woe? Okay, you, you might want to woe something just out of curiosity. Um, but there's actually more to it. So it could be personal interest, but more importantly, uh, more important is the following thought. If one person wrote the code, the code is simply not private anymore. And this is a really nice concept. Um, so if it's not private anymore, why don't you open source it directly? This step is not necessary, per se, but it makes sense, doesn't it? And then the question is, why is open source beneficial in general? Um, let's start with a definition of what open source actually is before we understand why it's so important. There is not this one definition for open source. Um, there are lots of definitions, and I have here a definition of 10 sub points by the open source initiative and because the sub points aren't enough to really understand what it is there is more explanation on the website and I'll read the first two to you so you have a bit of more understanding what open source really means. The license shall not resist any party from reselling or giving away the software as a component of an aggregate software distribution containing programs from several different sources. The license shall not require royalty or other fee for such sale. And I already imagine it in the Monty Python style. The second one is even longer, and I have a shortened version of it that will also just read to you. The program must include source code and must allow distribution in source code as well as compiled from. Where some, from, where some form of a product is not distribu distributed with source code, there must be a well-publicized means of obtaining the source code for no more than a reasonable reproduction cost, preferably downloading via the internet without charge. And it just goes on and on. And this is already the reason why I, in my head, just translate what is open source to, I have the source code. More interesting for me than really having the definition is uh, the benefits for open source. So you could just um, have the open source so you know what software you run. You can check if the implementation is according to law for the government cases. It is more secure since everyone can review the code and um, you have the chance for reusability. And reuse is important. Reuse within the government could save us all quite some money. Save us some money, you say? Vote for me. Well, no, you can't and you shouldn't. Um, but w what's the point here? Um, actually, Mendel looked up all that data. Um, but here you can see how much money we really spend on government IT. So we have uh, two points of data, one from 2008 and one from um, 2022. The budget for 2008, so what we thought it would cost, was 2.1 billion. And it's on purpose that I put all those zeros there to just to give you an idea how huge this number is and how much money it actually is. I don't have numbers for comparison, so it doesn't say that much, of course, from how much do we spend on other things, but it's still really a lot of money. And then we have the budgeted, which was 2.1 billion, and then we look at what we used in reality, and it was 3.5 billion euros in 2008. There we also have data from um, the, not just 
general government, but the subdivision, the, the Reichsoverheit, the national government, and there we had budgeted half a billion euros, and we used more than triple of it, 1.7 billion. And with time, it actually just increases. So those are the numbers from 2022, where we budgeted 4.7 billion euros, and we used um, 6 billion euros for Dutch government IT. <laughs> if you want to know more about big IT activities of the national government, you can check out the Rijksict dashboard.nl. You know the dot because it's in English. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But okay, <laughs> uh, so we spend a lot of money there and this, well, reuse would really be beneficial here. But I also want to mention that there are a couple of government um, programs, uh, how is that called, um, open source projects that we already have. So there's, for example, the Corona Melder app, which was developed to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. And you have the app that sent uh, users a warning if they had been in the vicinity of someone. Or you have the uh, Corona Check, the official Dutch app for showing the coronavirus entry card. Then there's also OpenCut, which is a vulnerability analysis tool which can scan and analyze information systems. There's also the open web concept um, who work on IT building blocks for communities. This is really useful. And NLX is a scheme of software and agreements that interconnects the data of government organizations. It's just a subset, there is more, but there can be even more. So how to open source, I mean, whoa, the government. We already had it a bit in the beginning, but what, <laughs> but what can you do now um, uh, when you really want to have the code? So you can't just ask for the open source code. Oh, wait a second. Oh, this is really small. It was, it was a huge question mark there. Imagine it being huge. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but you can ask within the context of the Open Government Act, could I maybe have access to the source code? And it helps to state why you want to have it, just to have people work with you and not against you. You could say it's for reuse. Maybe you want to build it your own. Maybe you want to be in control what you run. Maybe you want to get insights in how problems were solved because you want to reuse it later on. Another reason could also be that it is handier to have the code legally. So think of app code that you could easily decompile yourself, um, but it's just way nicer to have that code human readable and from a legal source. Very often, as already stated, you can then just find it on the website, the contact details, you can just um, write a normal email, no, no different jargon that you have to use, just ask kindly. And then the last one is picking the right timing helps tremendously for good underpinning of your argument. For example, woeing right after an organization is in the media is very, it's just beneficial. <laughs> Now that we know uh, how it works, we of course want to have a look what happened. So if you uh, kind of still give this um, organization the choice to go for the red pill and really uh, share what reality looks like, or to shut down and stay in the blue world, what will they do? And Mendel will tell you more about that. Does this work? Yes. No, it's off. So. Good. So, what I did was send a very friendly email to uh, Logius, who are the owners of uh, DigiD. And uh, I accidentally basically some people, but uh, that doesn't really matter. And uh, this is what a woe request looks like if you're not a lawyer or, or a legal person. So, this is just plain normally. I want everything. This is very nicely stated that exactly what you want, everything. Um, of this software. Um, so I put it to the test and uh, this was funny because um, I got an invitation for an informal talk with a spokesperson and a senior lawyer and um, um, the CT CEO or so from, from Logius and some other people from Ministry of Internal Affairs, which was funny, very informal talk. 
I was available on the weekends, I said to them, they said, nah, our people work only during the day. Now, that's a problem I have, I have work. But um, I'm available for lunches, so they said, okay, let's lunch. So we had a lunch meeting, and they did their homework. So they said, do we have the source code? Uh, because they have it made by some company. The answer was no. Uh, do they legally own the source code? So should they be able to have it? Yes. So it's documents that fall under. At that point, there was uh, the legal presumption. Uh, there are documents, and we should give them. Um, they also thought a little bit not too long about what is very risky, and they thought, ah, the client app on your phone is very risky, um, which is a .NET uh, app in Xamarin, if you know it. You can just decompile it, and you have the source code, and they had some debugging. Uh, is all the naming was intact, so you could basically de debug. You could already have the source code, but not legally. So, um, and the back end, that should be fine. That should be no problem. Yeah, turn out it was the other way around. But they published the source code of uh, the app at first, um, which was a new process for them. So it took a little bit more than six weeks. So like we're now one and a half year later, we're not completely there yet. Um, so we got free view access to the source code to see if there was something wrong with it. Uh, and if they redacted the names correctly and we helped them a bit um, because it was also new for them. Um, no, it worked, um, they published it. Um, now then some news about it and then the internet found out that this was the internet on GitHub. So they found problems. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, this is debugging code. This is, a c we called it the Christmas tree. This is not a problem. So if that's the biggest problem in your code, you're done a very well job. Um, so, the process was, and this is for every government organization, it's very easy. You acquire the actual source code, you look at it, or have somebody look at it who knows what it's about, um, invite people like me or, the, uh, or some other people for a preview if you want that. Um, and there's always people in the open source community who maybe want to help at some point. Um, then gather the feedback and then publish the source code. Sounds very, very easy, right? Um, so we tried this for the back end. Uh, this is funny. It's uh, 27,000 lines in Ruby on Rails. And who here actually programmed Ruby on Rails? No. Oh, there are more people than they found. <laughs> 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 um, so this is a problem, because uh, why it's a problem? Um, because they have big contracts for pen tests and security reviews with companies and they should first ask those companies. Those companies go around, try to find out if they have uh, the expertise to do security review. And the answer was no, no, no. So then they do uh, a public request for a company that can do it and that takes some time for legal reasons. So now, one and a half year later, we're around there. It also contained the, li right, the same amount of lines in Java. Um, and then we got invited for another lunch meeting so, so I'm now at four or five, I don't know exactly. Um, the security review didn't find any big problems, so we're pretty secure as Netherlands using DigiDay, so that's fine. Um, uh, we got a preview access to it, so I signed an NDA and uh, I have it somewhere. And uh, somewhere next uh, month, uh, we have another lunch meeting to discuss what I found and what others found. And uh, after that, they will maybe fix it, maybe not fix it, just publish it, and then take care of the problem if they're not too big. Um, so this was the easy one. Uh, this takes one and a half year or something like that. Um, um, and, uh, but after the, the app was uh, done, I had something like, ah, there's something else in the news. <laughs> it's the, the VAT system for the added tax uh, on vegetables and something, there was zero percent suggested, and then somebody said, the software cannot do that, and then I said, oh, like, show me the software. Um, so a thing happened. <laughs> they ignored me. They just plainly ignored me completely. They didn't send me any, we got your request, they didn't. I sent them a nice email, I don't like it that you ignore me, and I didn't include any of the legal mumbo jumbo that was suggested. Uh, I just sent them, you ignored me. Then you go to the legal maze. So you go to the, uh, the court website, you log in with DigiDay. It's pretty secure now, it seems. So I just logged in, paid 185 euros, and I had court date. That court date was very easy. 
just said, ah, you ignored mister. Yes, we did. Yeah, that was not allowed, so you, you win. Okay, fine, I get my money back. <laughs> <coughs> but um, yeah, there's, there's a thing, because then, then, oh yeah, but in the meantime, you decided he's not getting it. Yes. Uh, okay, good. Um, now then you, you go back, uh, then you, you go into uh, Bezwaar, I don't know what's in English. Um, and yeah, appeal, yeah, then you appeal at the blasting dienst and they have to review it. And uh, so I did that, that legal arguments and said, uh, no, it's not legal to ignore a citizen. Um, and they said something like, uh, yeah, our software, um, if it's publicly known how our software works and how we handle VAT, then the Dutch state will go bankrupt. <laughs> <laughs> so my thing was, you never heard of black box pen testing. Um, yeah, and if you manipulate the software, like you're a big company, like you're Ahold or something, and you manipulate your, your tax returns and everything in a way that you didn't pay VAT, and then at the end of the year or beginning of next year, you tell your shareholders, we screwed the Dutch government and didn't pay any VAT. Doesn't really sound like a good idea. I mean, they tried this with Ahold in the United States, something <laughs> illegal, illegal, didn't go well. So I guess, no, it's not going to happen. Um, so that went into, went into appeal, and after that uh, I had a, a, you have the legal uh, option to be heard. So you actually can talk with people in a physical office. So that's what I did. So I explained them for an hour how this works. Um, they made no note of it. Now then they went to the Ministry of Finance, there they talked, and now they uh, are currently looking into what actually this software is. <laughs> um, yeah, I needed to <laughs> add a picture. It's, it's, it's like they're going to rebuild it for 190 million in a couple of years, and that's excluding VAT. Uh, I mean, that's. Sorry. Um, so I thought, okay, this is funny. Um, so let's do another one. Uh, this, this was a clusterfuck. I have other reasons that I wanted to solve here um, because, uh, yeah, we all heard the news about it and things like that. So I did uh, vote them. Um, now, of course, they said, uh, no, we reject it because it's, uh, we didn't buy the software. We bought it as a service. Okay, this is shitty. I want all the documentation about how you bought it as a service. And it's a, uh, yeah, that tender was, uh, was secret. So all information about the secret. Okay, so I went into appeal, got a nice talk, and now I have some confidential documents that I said to them is okay, so they will publish them very soon, and then I can do the next <coughs> step, which is probably going to Kanspel Autoriteit. Because it was a gamble if you get the thousand euros or not. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so this is what you can do if you see any interesting software, just friendly ask for it. and. Be prepared to just put some time in it. Just don't, yeah, you can ask it and then wait, and but you're not getting it, and it's not helping. So um, let's see. Uh, yes, I, I got multiple free lunches, yes. <laughs> that, uh, that, that free software, free lunch, uh, both the checkboxes. <laughs> so thank you very much. Um, and um, yeah, a big thank you to everybody who helped also in this process yet. And, uh, and we might have some little time left for questions. I know the drinks are starting, but um, in case you don't know a question, we have example questions, but you have a question. Yes, so you're talking a lot about reuse. Um, I was wondering, if the government publishes things on their pool, then what copyrights? They put a uh, EUPL, they put a European public license on it. Mm, it's a choice they do, else it falls under the government published document and you can do whatever you want to do with it. Um, so it's a choice. Um, because about some um, questions at this point, do you see some change in how they respond to it or they are becoming more open because they um, are they running away with it and more Yeah, funny you ask. Yes because I already got a co call from some senior legal people which we got a request from somebody else and we want to exclude these fonts or something. How do we write that down? 
<laughs> so that's the other way working on. So, but yeah, th there, there are some changing because the question of is how do we exclude the fonts is like we're publishing the rest. So that's, that's the good answer. So, any other questions? We have example questions for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My excellent question. <laughs> I made up all those questions, so now that you're stopping that to me. Um, well, I don't know if there's really that much help in general. I think you have to uh, try to make a case for what could you possibly go. What I think would help just the whole community is if you made a website with lists of what was what when, just to get an overview. Because currently it's just individuals doing that, so why not build up a strategy and just make it more systematic? Oh, you already have the list. Is Big Wooter all registered? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I think in a few minutes so we get. <laughs> And any other questions? Yeah. So they said they mentioned something about the card and they had asked the blue about it. Sounds like a funny story. Oh, yeah, um, the way you can um, uh, submit your woe request. So oh, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Well, free. Well, yeah. Well, once the Dutch uh, national cybersecurity is the uh, best cybers we have with public money, the Netherlands decided to publish a very stupid report about open source, and I thought, okay, if you're that stupid, maybe not use computers, so I went to greets.nl, ordered a big, nice postcard, um, like a birthday card, uh, and said, uh, surprise, a woe well request, and uh, type <laughs> it in, and, uh, and, and sent that to them. Uh, it took them a few days, like, like two weeks, to process that within the ministry, to have it delivered at the right department. Well, I gave them that time, that was not a problem. Um, and it was and like a, a creepy teddy bear on no, front no, of no, the card, right? No, 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 it was a nice red well, big cat. Well, it makes it creepy if you send it in a postcard. But yes, okay. yes, yes. <laughs> and but the good news was uh, they took the report down at uh, Saturday before Christmas last year, so somebody's day was not so good. So <laughs> that's that's the good part. Yes, yeah? that's mm. the good part. Any other questions? There's actually a question I think that uh, should be addressed, but that we probably will not address. And that's the point of, of course, we're a bit messing with the government here. And we know that Mendel likes trolling uh, in, in that sense. But you could ask the, the ethical question, how much money does it cost the government, so us again, um, that those requests are made? I personally don't have a clue. Um, I, I, do you have, I, I, do you have I, an I, estimate? I, 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 I have some estimates about this. Um, at one point, somebody on Twitter complained that this was costing too much public money. So I said, send me a ticket for one euro at 38, and he sent me a paid it. So end of that discussion. Um, <laughs> this is not that expensive, uh, if you do it right. If you take a lot of time with useless requests, yes, of course, then, then a lot of people are going to have to go to a lot of documents. You can easily make a request that fits like 20 million documents, which is not funny. Um, the yeah. thing is, most of these organizations, the programmers there and, and the people actually doing the work, uh, they are asking if they can publish uh, uh, their li little library so they can include it with NPM for building without going through all the hassle of a private repository and everything. So um, that saves on that one. Of course, this costs money, um, but it's also a legal obligation uh, that they uh, have to do it. I think that's important because it does cost money, but if they have more requests and get more into uh, the way how they should handle it and make uh, or disclose information uh, sooner. Th this was the first yeah. one for Logius. Uh, this took a lot of time. Meanwhile, there was another project what's called Playo, and they spent like nine million on it instead of the 30 million plans, killed the project. I sent a mail, can I have the source code? And they say, oh yeah, no problem. And a few months later, it was there. It didn't cost that much. So. Um, Because there are real costs involved in that. 
Oh yeah, yeah, you can double I, I, that I, budget. I, I believe that that's going to be one of the main points. Now that's the thing I'm testing with uh, the, the tax service with the Belasting Dienst, because yeah. that's, that's like 40 years old now. Yeah, yeah but I, th I, I, don't, yeah. I don't say they will get it the code thing quite easily. Oh, we'll see. I think the, sor the source of that problem is also somewhere else, that the IT infrastructure of the government is not it up to date. It depends on which part of the government and where, yeah. but uh, a lot of it is... Uh, well, in general, we know it's, a, it's an issue, so yeah. Yeah, yeah well, if, if you go to the tax, they were on the speakers uh, two or three years ago, because they published over there. It's even good there, in terms of the big amounts. Let's see. Uh, yeah, there. Yeah. Uh, That's, that's what they're now more thinking about because you can ask it afterwards, so why not publish it up front and start open development? Yes. Uh, in the back, there was one. Yeah, so for this uh, flat uh, code base, you had a, a nice reason, like you could pick it, but you could basically request any kind of code without any information whatsoever. Yeah, it's very easy to be a jerk, correct? <laughs> from a, from a <laughs> but legally, yes, you can. The, the law <laughs> states that you don't have to motivate why you want the information. But it helps. It helps to have. It helps yeah. to motivate. Because on the other side, there are also people working. Okay. So and they're I'm not waking up. To explain no, no. Uh, th yeah. But they're not waking up with the idea, I'm going to make somebody's day shitty. But if they yeah. feel trashed, they might change that during the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, last summer, a journalist of Groen Amsterdammer, he was uh, working inside the team. I yeah. recommend it to, for someone who's interested in that role and how that goes internally in the Ministry of Internal Affairs. Yeah. Is there coordination? What's uh, free now? I have no coordination. I just do <laughs> some things and it turned out very good. Sorry. It was, it's fragmented. Uh, it, it's fragmented. Other people, other people also do it on some projects. Uh, so I know this because I asked the project and they said, you're the second one. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's very easy. Then I don't have to do anything anymore. Just wait. Uh, big ah. <laughs> 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 okay. Any other questions? So, well, then uh, we have drinks. Uh, just Ooh. before that, uh, one more thing or two more things. First of all, if you want to help the NLUG uh, um, achieving their goals, uh, come talk to uh, to anyone that I uh, had standing up this morning. And the second thing is mark your agendas for the 21st of May next year, <laughs> because then we have another of those conferences. So. There's, there's still some time to put in papers. <laughs> yeah? When can we uh, look at the papers for the next one? Soon. Yeah. Tomorrow. I heard it tomorrow. So give it a couple of hours and like six and then go. Okay. All right. Thanks again. I'll have a, a little <laughs> present. Thank you. Goed, als je die mijn aanwezig is, als je wil hebben, prima.